Hey everybody, this is Joe Pace with Ice Water Yoga and today we're making hard yoga poses easy. Today it's crow pose and then also working towards crane pose, which is just the same pose with straight elbows. Here's what crow pose is. Place the hands underneath the body. You rock your elbows up your triceps. You're ultimately bringing both feet off the floor rocking the chest forward. Generally a first arm balance for people to get into. It's really accessible because the center of gravity is very low and also somewhat wide. And also you're pretty low to the ground so there isn't so much risk involved. But when you first start, it feels like you're gonna smash your face into the ground. And honestly, you might crash your face into the ground a few times, so especially if you're not doing it right. But maybe with the principles that we're gonna talk about today, you won't come crashing down ever. We're gonna break it down into five steps. The reason I like to give five steps is because you can always do the pose. It doesn't necessarily have to look like what I did, but on your way towards doing what I just did, you're getting pretty much all the benefits of the pose along the way. Let's start on our back. So the first step, is to just experience the pose like you're a turtle on its back. We bring the elbows in, or so we bring the knees in, extend the hands towards the ceiling. As opposed to bringing the knees to the elbows, we want to accentuate the engagement of the core, which is a huge component of the pose and often gets forgotten. Think about lifting the shoulder blades off the mat, hug the knees towards the elbows. Same alignment principles that you're gonna have when you're on your hands. Hands are shoulders width, my index fingers are parallel, my fingers are spread wide. I'm extending through both elbows. I'm hugging my heels towards my butt. I'm lifting my tailbone off the mat. I'm lifting my shoulder blades off the mat to engage the core. And I'm pressing my knees into my elbows, gently lower. Okay, so if you can hold that for a good minute, you're in a really great spot to start moving into the next step, which is chaturanga push-up. So chaturanga isn't necessarily the pose, but it strengthens all the parts of the body you need for a really strong crow. So number two is just chaturanga push-up. And what's different about chaturanga push-ups and regular push-ups is there's actually some focus on alignment. And I don't mean to bag on and make fun of regular push-ups, but there is there are so many different ways I've seen push-ups done. Some of them don't look so great. This one is gonna be probably pretty productive for just building overall strength and protecting your joints along the way. So for a chaturanga push-up, you're gonna start on your knees at first. And the key is to keep your your hands at shoulders width and never let your elbows fall behind the wrists or forward of the wrist. Keep them directly over the wrists at all times. Start with my knees on the mat. I keep my elbows over the wrists. My chest comes forward, which is a huge key for crow pose. I'm going to lower down, elbows staying over wrists. Maybe my feet come off the floor. Shoulders stay over the elbows. Elbows hug in towards my midline and then I press back up to straight arm. Hands are shoulders width, fingers are spread, index fingers parallel, elbows over wrists, elbows hug my ribs, shoulders forward, chest forward, shoulders never dropping below the elbows, and then I press back. Ultimately, you can do that from plank pose, lower, rise. If you can do 10 of those, that's actually very much beast mode. <laughs> it's gonna be hard. Regular push-ups, you're just cranking them out. You're not really thinking about how you're doing them. Doing 10 slow, in control chaturanga push-up is very challenging. So that's why it's not step one, but on its way towards the full arm balance. So once you've given yourself enough time to develop that strength to do 10 strong, slow chaturanga push-ups, then you grab your blocks. What the blocks do is they elevate your feet. And by elevating your feet, you can focus more on what's going on in the upper body, less so in the lower body, which is good for just starting out. So we set up the blocks double wide, one, step the feet onto the blocks, bring the knees together or wide, hands come down to the mat. So from here, you're on the balls of your feet, hands come shoulders width, elbows hug in, you're spinning the biceps forward. So don't think about elbows ever bowing out from one another. Hug the elbows in towards your midline and your elbows are going to want to splay out. Always feel like you're pulling them in. Knees come as high up the triceps as you can get them. Before you even take the feet off the blocks, make sure your elbows are right over your wrists, just like chaturanga. Hands are spread wide, fingers spread wide, index fingers parallel. And think about just rocking your weight forward and then come back. Rock your weight forward, 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 engage your core. Maybe one foot lifts, lower down. Forward, 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 elbows hug in, 
maybe the other foot lift. Maybe you rock your weight so far forward, balancing elbows over wrists, that the other one comes up too, hug the heels towards the butt, and then gently lower back down. By doing this, you're giving yourself a little bit of a platform, a little bit of training wheels to just gently ease into this idea of shifting the weight forward. So just like we did in Chaturanga, where we shift the weight forward first to keep the elbows over the wrists, we want the same exact idea for crow. Step four, no blocks. So now we don't have the training wheels that we had before. We do the same exact thing though. Hands will be shoulders width, fingers spread wide, index fingers parallel, wrists are parallel with the front of the mat. Spin the biceps forward, rock the weight forward, come onto the tiptoes, shifting the weight forward. Then you come back, shift weight forward, elbows in over the wrists, maybe one foot lifts maybe both feet lift. And here's where you wanna hold crow pose with a super strong core. Your core is so strong that your knees start to get light. You're feeling like you're not even pressing your knees into your tricep. From there, you lower. And a lot of people often have the question, should my knees be on top of my triceps? In my opinion, yes. Technically, you can bring the knees outside of the triceps, but what you have to do here is pull your knees in towards one another, Otherwise, they're gonna slide right off and you're gonna fall. You don't wanna be looking like this with wide frog legs. You really want to keep the knees as high up the triceps as you can and then hug in to keep the pose light. I recommend keeping the knees on top of the triceps. It hurts a little bit at first, but it gives you the structure and the strength to really maintain the pose for a longer time. And also, it gives you more incentive to engage your core so your knees can get light. Okay, so we've made it all the way to crow. And once you're able to hold crow for an extended period of time, call it 10 deep breaths, then it's time to think about crane. Crane is gonna require a little bit of wrist flexibility, also a, little, a lot of form arm strength and a lot of just body control. So make sure you've warmed up your wrists first, but you can also work towards this pose. So this is step five, crane pose. You're going to get your knees high up the triceps, almost into your armpits. So that's the step, the first step is being able to do that. So if you can't do that, work your forward folds, work mostly forward folds, hamstring flexibility, low back range of motion. You're gonna do everything that you did in crow and you're actually gonna come into crow pose. You're hugging your core in so much that your butt lifts and then straighten the arms. So the shoulders are forward of the wrists, you grip the mat with the fingertips and then lower back down to crow and then lower the feet back down. On your way towards crane, you do not have to get to all the way straighten with the arm. The whole transition of getting to crow and then to crane is a matter of shifting the chest forward to get to crow and then from crow, straighten the elbows and draw the chest even more forward. So watch the center of my chest as I make the transition. Crow pose, my chest draws forward and then I keep drawing the chest forward to come into crane. Chest comes back, chest comes back to come out. So it's really about using your center of gravity to your advantage. We practice that all the way back with our chaturanga push-ups. Center of gravity moves forward so we can balance our weight with elbows over wrists. So all of these steps really coordinate with one another, go with one another, and we'll give you five specific steps to work towards full crane pose. So keep working it. Feel free to ask any questions right here. Thank you very much for your time.